I was hired uh, to be an education aide, and uh, I loved it because uh, I started in the preschool where my children were, and I had a really great time because the teacher was a young male teacher, very few male pre-kindergarten pre teachers. And he would do these outlandish things. I said, you can't do that with kids. Why not? And so he was very, I loved it because he was very free and he didn't know anything about children. And so we were a good team. <laughs> I was there for, uh, I think about four years. And then I was moved to the you know, upper grades, so actually first grade. And during the 60s, that was 1968, when I was moved to the upper grades, there was a need for Spanish-speaking teachers. There were no Spanish-speaking teachers in our school. So all, almost all the education aides who were there were the translators, because we started getting all this influx of immigrant children. And for the most part, they would sit in the back. I mean, the teachers, uh, so when I started working with a teacher, um, uh, she was a great teacher, very loving teacher. She didn't understand or sp speak any English, Spanish at all, so the kids, I would sit with them and maybe translate or just, at that, first I was just translating, and so then um, they got this, uh, they called it Title Seven uh, grants, many of the schools did for uh, bilingual education. So then we were we got training from the University of Austin. And, uh, and the coordinator there came and we would have workshops on many things, on uh, delivering and on teaching, um, reading, but in Spanish because then the bilingual, that was the bilingual program. And so I, well, I, I use Spanish of course, but you know, to have it uh, uh, academic, Spanish, you know, I did some, I le learned some things too, but there was so many interesting things happening before that. That was right after the, the, the moratorium, 19, no, it was after. Well, I was, uh, I was already at Education Aid at Hamel when this was happening. There was meetings, teachers, some teachers were so, uh, against, against, uh, I don't know, they were against, they were so fearful, just like people are today. I don't know what they thought. Well, I know that today that, that we have, were more than they are, more people, and they're so afraid of that. But we had these meetings for staff meetings, and of course we were part of the staff meeting. I remember one teacher saying, well, I think that, you know, this is a democracy and the majority rules, so why should we be speaking Spanish when the majority in this country is English speaking? And then I, I, to, I told her, I don't know, I got the courage to say, well, is, I think the, the essence of a democracy is you don't accommodate the majority. You integrate the, the minority and it, for everyone to have equal opportunity. And she was so shocked that I would speak up because they really looked down on many of them. The ones who didn't have a, the bilingual classroom they really looked down on us to, that we were inferior because we didn't have a credential. And so then what happened during that time in the late, like 1969, the government had this program called the College Opportunity Program. They call it a COP program. So it was for education aides who wanted to get into teaching. And of course I said, I do. And so we got funded to, but you had to be a full-time education aid, six hour aid, and have a full time um, uh, load in East LA, well we started at East LA College. And so I had 12 units and worked there. So that was the wonderful time, but hardest time. And it, if it wasn't for my mother, I always lived next door to my mother. And my oldest sons, the two oldest sons, my husband too, he was a truck driver and, and he, you know, he would come home from work tired, but he, he would cook, or I would come home, because I was right near my, I lived near the school, I would come home at, at noon or whenever I had the break, because the classes, I would go to East LA College after school, at nights, and then summers. I did that for, from 68, I graduated from, it took me more than two years, because I, the beginning, I didn't take the full load, uh, 1972, from, from East LA and then I went to Cal State LA and I got a small uh, Ford Foundation scholarship. 
uh, and there was more stipend and books. I went to Cal State LA and graduated in 1974, but I went one more semester because I wanted the, the teaching semester, uh, the teaching year credential, and uh, so I got my credential in 75, and I got it. I wanted to work at Hamel, but uh, the principal there was not very open to people who were outspoken. <laughs> I wasn't a, a, you know, like a radical, but, but I would speak up when I needed to. And so that was my first choice, but I got a job at City Terrace, which is up the hill there. I'm still in the, still in the neighborhood, you know. And so I, I, that was my whole career. I stayed there. Well, I, the, the, the year that I did my student teaching at Hamel with Mrs. Collin, that wonderful woman, and, uh, and then the rest of the time was from City Terrace from 1975 to 1999. So I worked there 27 years. Mm, and by that I... time, that time I was 68 years old, so, <laughs> so it was time for, you know, I retired. And I retired because I was, it was getting hard. Well, it had, I felt it was time to retire, but, but the, the mandates from the district, you know, it was right after the two that... Uh, Leave no child left behind, right? Well, it was just before that. It yeah. was the bilingual, they oh, shot down right. the bilingual, because I taught a bilingual classroom the, my whole career. We always had a need. And then, you know, in our school, it was a pilot program. It would, all the teachers had to be bilingual, white and whoever they were. So they were all bilingual. They weren't all wonder. They weren't all uh, open, you know, to the students. But they they knew Spanish, and um, the the year I was there one year after that law, nineteen ninety eight, I guess it was when they struck down the bilingual education mm -hmm. law. Except in some cases, but our school wasn't qualified for it. Uh, they had the coordinator had to come in to the rooms and do a kind of like a survey. How much Spanish are you speaking to the children? And I said, well, oh, about, I said 50%, it's much, 50%, oh, you can't be doing that. It has to be 25% or less. And I said, okay, you put that, 25 or less, do that. I'm gonna speak to the kids. If I want them to learn, I'm not gonna be, you do whatever, it, put yeah. it down, whatever it is that I'm supposed to do, that's what I'm doing. I was so angry. Even one of the teachers says, I oh, it's so hard now, I can't speak to the kids in Spanish. Kindergartners, why not? Well, we're not supposed to. Oh my God, I can't believe it. They're, how are you gonna teach, are, are, are they gonna go through, through like in my era, when the kids got hit? And not got hit, or they were put in, uh, in uh, classes for retarded kids because mm -hmm. they couldn't get it? Come on now, you know, I was so angry. It, and happened quite a bit.